Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Max and today I'm very excited to be going over another set of smart permanent outdoor lights. This one by the company Smite Titan. They actually sent me this set free of charge. So first of all, thank you so much for that. If you are familiar with my channel, you know that I not only love going over reviewing smart lights and smart technology, but I also love going big with my holiday setups. Right now it's October, so I have a ton of stuff out for Halloween. And when December rolls around, you better believe that I'll have my Christmas stuff out too. Now, a little less than a year ago, I did a whole video on installing a different set of permanent outdoor lights on my house that my wife and I are absolutely loving. But that run actually did not cover the entirety of the house. So it's awesome that I got this extra set to finish up what I started almost a year ago. I'm curious to see how this brand's lights compare to the ones that I currently have up on the house and how they complement each other. But yeah, let's go ahead and get in the box and see what these are like, and then go over the complete install. All right, so we got a huge box from Smate Titan. You can see that this particular permanent light set works with Google Home and Amazon Alexa, and it runs 150 feet. Very curious to see how this compares to the set that I currently have on my house, and excited to get these on so I can finish doing the run that I didn't have enough hardware for last year. So let's get right into the box. All right, so getting right into it, we have a full user manual. Very nice that they have fully written out directions. I've said it before on this channel, I'll say it again, having access to this, especially when you're doing major installs like this will require, is incredibly nice, and I always appreciate it versus having to fumble around with a site or scrolling through an online video. And then in the first box, We have all of our lighting strip. So yeah, I just went through this wire and it does not appear that there's any break points. So you have 150 feet and you are stuck with that 150 feet for the entirety of your install. On other lights that I've looked at, there have been segments, which was nice so you can be flexible. It also gives you the opportunity to run kind of jump wires in between runs. So if you have to go from one level of roof to another, you have the ability to do that. With this, you're gonna to have to actually use the wiring itself to do that jump. I'll also note that these lights are a little bit smaller in terms of the chassis around the LED compared to what I've been used to in the past. So we'll have to see how that looks in practice next to our other lights. They do have the trademark 3M adhesive on the back that we'll use to attach to the softening outside the house. Moving on to the other box that was in the package. We have a bag of hardware that includes screws, clips, and some additional 3M adhesive if you happen to need them. We have a remote that can be used to control the lights. We have a power adapter. We have an additional control unit that likely connects to the power adapter. And then we have an extension wire. So another interesting aspect of these compared to the other install that I've done is that rather than having separate brackets, this wants you to screw in screws directly to the little chassis that comes around the lights. And you can see there are little tiny loops on either side that allow you to do that. So that'll definitely be interesting. Anytime I get an expensive lighting fixture like this before I go and do the install, I do like to plug it in to see if it works. So let's go ahead and do that now. Well, as you can see, they definitely work and they are putting off a ton of light even with that little size. So I think these are gonna be great for the exterior of the house. So I'm gonna go through all these and make sure they're all lighting up correctly and then move on to the install steps and how I set these up. So I'll do that off camera and we'll get directly to the install now. So before I actually install these on the house, I also synced them with my phone. I didn't wanna to have to worry about the run potentially putting the control box in an inaccessible place that would make this difficult. So if you are wiring this in your attic or someplace where it might be difficult to reach, it's probably a good idea to sync these with your phone and make sure that all the settings are working before you get this installed on your roof or wherever you're putting it. Once that was done, I took the power run and the extension and brought it up to my attic. This is where I had wired my previous run, and so I plan on doing the same thing. I also, at this time, used a metal rod to pop the soffit up off my roof so that it'd be easy to access and create a gap to run that wire down through, similar to what I had previously, and running down through the same spot. With that popped up, all I had to do is to go over to that part of the attic and feed the wire down through so it started to poke out through to the outside. Once it was on the outside, I went back onto that part of the roof and pulled it through so I had the length necessary to start my run on the section of roof that I was targeting. 
Now, one of the reasons I didn't finish my run last year is not just because the length of the strip that I previously purchased was not enough for the entire roof, but it was also because this section of the roof kind of required its own separate run and was also at such a height that I could not reach with the ladder that I had. For this particular run, I had to do some roof scampering and rent a 32 foot ladder. So just keep that in mind that depending on how your house is set up, you might have to do something similar and it can be dangerous depending on what you climb on. So definitely do an install such as this at your own risk and taking the proper precautions. The first thing I had to do for my run is I had to run the wire from the location where it came out of the soffiting over to the peak on the roof where I was starting the lights on this particular run. When I did this, I made sure to tuck the wire into the siding, particularly the corner and the edge covers. This allowed me to keep the wire completely out of sight other than the portion that jumps from one side of the roof to the other. I did end up covering that part of the wire with some black Gorilla Tape to make it blend better with my dark colored roofing. Once I got it up to the location where I wanted to start my run, I tucked more of the wire into the softening edges and up into the attic itself on that side and then wired in the light part of the run. Now, as I've said before, this is one giant 100 foot strand. So you do have to be careful with where you're placing this so you're not having too much weight and it's just yanking your lights down. Just something to keep in mind as you go. From here, the process is pretty simple. You peel the cover off the 3M adhesive, you press the light into place, and then you drill the screw into the pilot hole to secure that light wherever you might want it. Now for me, I only use one screw at a time. I felt that with the 3M adhesive gave me a plenty strong connection. I also used the perforated holes that are in the soffiting as my pilot hole. So I didn't actually have to drill into anything new. Now to do this, I couldn't actually use the screws that came with this kit. I had to use slightly larger ones, which at times was an issue since the pilot holes are so small. And if I wasn't careful, they would actually break the little plastic around it. So Make sure if you do do this, you pick the right size that is big enough for your holes, but not so big that it's going to break the light fixture. Now for my particular install, I put the lights up against the softening border as doing so allowed me to have a straight line without having to do any type of measurement. It also gave me the ability to tuck the wire in between the lights as I went, which made the whole run blend more in and be less in sight during the day when it was light out. Now when I got to the latter portion, I simply move section by section, taking my time and repeating the same process as before. You peel, you stick, you screw in using your desired method, and you move along. I was able to do this all the way up and down my peak, and then finally I got to a point where I had to do another jump between where my peak ended and where I wanted the lights to continue on later on. To do this, similar to the beginning of the run, I tucked the lighting into the siding to hide the run running down. I did have to make an about three foot jump from that peak of my house to the gutters, and again, for that, I covered those lights up with black tape so I didn't have a bunch of lights trailing along my roof. And then this is where I actually used the gutter and mounted the lights inside that to keep that part of the run out of sight to get to the next spot where I wanted to continue on with the light run that I was doing. Once I made it all the way over to where I wanted the lights to come back out again, I simply came back out of the gutter and ran it down back to the softening and started up the side peak of my house. Again, same process, peel, stick, screw in, and slowly but surely, I was able to make my way all the way around that part of the house as well. Now, this was all I was gonna do for my run, but I had so much left of this cord with this 150 foot run, I felt like it'd be a huge waste just to try to cut it and cap it. So I actually continued on to put this on to the back of my house. And even with doing the full wrap around on my third car garage, I still had more run to go. So I ran it down the corner part of my siding, along the bottom of my siding and actually back up slightly to create almost a full square on that part of the house. Not necessarily what I intended and I don't know if I'm gonna keep that or if I'm gonna cut it down, but let me tell you, this 150 foot run covered a ton of territory. And with that all stuck into place and screwed in, my install was done. This probably took me about four hours over the course of two days. And given the fact that I had such a difficult place to reach, I did have to rent a 32 foot ladder from Home Depot and have someone come and help me out to be a spotter and to be a counterweight on that ladder when I was doing certain parts of the install. So if you're gonna do something similar, definitely recommend to do that and take adequate precautions to make sure that you don't fall or injure yourself during the install. But yeah, with that, these were all installed. And as you can see, even during the day, put off a good amount of light, but obviously the real show is when it got dark. So let's jump to nighttime and see what these look like in action.
So I do have to say that these are pretty impressive lights. They put off a ton of illumination and have all sorts of cool color effect that you can use for your daily or holiday setup. If it happens to not be Halloween or Christmas, you can still have these on in a nice ambient white light to add some accent lighting to whatever area you install. But obviously since it's October, I have these things flashing all different colors to go along with the rest of the holiday decorations I have up. And they honestly look awesome. The whole house looks incredible and like one of the professionally done lighting setups that I've seen online before. They have basically every color you can think of. You can sync these lights to music. You can sync them to your smart devices. It has a ton of pre-built in effects. And of course it has scheduling functionality. So they do turn on and off at the specific times that I want my lighting going, which is great. Now install for me was difficult only because I was installing these in a difficult location. If you're not going 30 feet up to put these on, it's gonna be a lot easier. And the process itself to get these working is incredibly easy and pretty dummy proof. Now, my biggest con to these lights is definitely the fact that it is one giant 150 foot run. On the previous lights that I installed, even when you get the longer runs in the box, those kits are actually broken down into 16-ish foot lengths. This is a lot more manageable, particularly when you're up on a ladder trying to put these into place. With having that entire 150 foot run on the back end of whatever I was putting up, a lot of times the weight makes the adhesive on the light not work that well and would pull it down before I had a chance to put my screw in. Also, these lights are in a casing that is smaller than the previous ones that I had installed. So on top of having that weight, you have less 3M adhesive actually holding those into place. Now you can work around this by doing different things with that wiring so that it's not pulling too hard on whatever bulb you're pulling up as you're doing your install. But my biggest design recommendation for this company would be to do these runs in separate breaks so that you can do a section at a time. It would make it much more manageable. I will also say that the light animations with this particular set aren't as varied and as advanced as the other set that I have up, but there's still plenty of options there, so I doubt many people are even gonna notice. And the fact that it runs through a smart app means that they're going to update that over time. And as this company matures, you'll see more lighting effects that are likely gonna be more advanced and just add to the options that you have for whatever look you're trying to achieve. All in all, I think these look great and are definitely a light run that you should consider if you're planning on doing a permanent install setup on your house. I honestly can't believe with this and all the other smart lights that I currently have going, how good it makes the house look during the holiday season and can't wait to experiment with all the different effects that they have depending on the time of year that it is. On Amazon right now, this run usually costs $349, but right now there's an additional 105 coupon available that you can clip at checkout, making them less than $250. That's a really good deal for a 150 foot run of smart lights that are gonna look great on your house and makes them very competitive with other brands out there. As always, if you are interested in this product, I'll include a link in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. But yeah, definitely recommend these lights for anyone who's looking to upgrade their smart home setup and add some awesome permanent outdoor lighting to their home. But yeah, that's all I had to talk about today. If you did like this content and you wanna see more, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to see more. As always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.